Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of the second reproduction. So, let's jump right back in. I heard something. It sounded like a song, but also like a bubbling stream. What a mysterious tune. I walked through the darkness, guided by the sound. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Then go. The door is open. Was that the voice of a person? It sounded so cold, yet it seemed so warm, encouraging me to move forwards. Someone was calling out to me. I had to go. Princess! To that place. <clears throat> oh my god, he's alive! Ah! <laughs> Princess! <laughs> A dream! Are you alright, princess? You looked like you were having a bad dream. Oh my god, it was all a dream! Are you kidding me? I wasted all those tears over a dream! <laughs> a luxurious red room and a big bed enough for or to swallow someone. I was sure I couldn't recognize any of it, but I couldn't shake this odd nostalgic feeling tightening my chest. It was weak enough to endure, thankfully, so I held back the tears brimming in my eyes and returned to my senses. Lizette's bewildered face blurred in the reflected sunlight as he looked at me. Were you having a bad dream? Y yeah a really odd dream. It's probably because I'm still nervous. I'm not surprised. This isn't the most comforting place to rest after all. This had to be a coincidence. I couldn't possibly feel nostalgic for this room. It had to be a delusion of some kind. The fact that Lizette's words just now were identical to what he said in my dream must have been down to chance. It's a pretty normal thing to say if you're concerned about someone after all. And I am the champion sent to defeat the Demon Lord. To defeat the Demon Lord? As I silently confirmed my duty in my mind, I, or a sharp pain suddenly ran through the depths of my heart. The phantom pain startled me, and I pressed the palm of my hand against my chest. Oh no, unless this is the dream! No! <laughs> I nervously slid my hand over my skin, checking for wounds or anything abnormal, but there was nothing out of the ordinary. I let out a sigh of relief. Oh, what's wrong with me? I was stabbed in, my, or in the dream, not in real life. But then, why did my chest hurt? I unconsciously put a trembling finger to my lips, the weird feeling making me frown. It was just a dream, but... But the, when I closed my eyes, the memory of the kiss and the taste of his blood sur uh, surfaced into my mind. The smile afterwards, the love that drove me insane, all of that was just a dream. Even so, why was there a part of me that hated the way it ended? I'd woken up, but my heartbeat wouldn't settle down. It, or It was just getting faster and faster. I blinked a few times, then glanced out of the window. For a moment, the image of the capital, bathed in crimson, flashed through my mind. The capital had been reduced to rubble by then, and I couldn't remember where Jin and Kiria went. I wanted to know if they were safe. Thoughts like that raced through my mind, but I smiled weakly, shaking them away. It was just a dream, so they didn't mean anything. Jin and Kiria were just characters in my dream anyway. Good morning! The door suddenly swung open and my eyes fixed themselves on the figure coming in. My body suddenly acted on its own. Kiria, are you okay? Huh? Surprised by the sudden hug, Kiria was taken, or taken aback. She blinked once, twice, and looked at me in bewilderment. Uh, you're Kiria, right? Uh, y yes but how do you know my name? Huh? Because... A chill suddenly ran down my spine, stopping me mid-sentence. What's... What's going on? 
was or what was I looking at? Was this a continuation of my dream? Fear leaked out of me, making cold sweat run down my neck. Oh, I see. Did you hear my name from the or from Lord Gardas last night? Seeing me freeze up, Kiria took control of the conversation and lightly hit her fist against the palm of her hand, as if realizing something. E yeah. Lizette, er, Lizette tilted his head in confusion, not quite following the conversation. I was having some trouble understanding what was going on myself, so I don't blame him. Did I dream the future? No, that's just too weird. It didn't have any of the convenient developments most dreams have, nor did it leave out most of the details. It felt more like a long play, as if I'd really lived through it. And it had a huge influence over me, even completely changing the way I thought. I placed a hand on my forehead, worried that there was something wrong with my brain. No, I can't dismiss it as a delusion or just coincidence. Not yet. Calm down and start from the beginning. I decided that, or I decided that, took a deep breath and spoke. Kiria, what are your opinions of Lizette and myself? Huh? Champions, or er, champions are the natural enemy of the demon race, so I was wondering. Oh, I like you both a lot. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> Based on? <laughs> well, you kept your promise back then and didn't kill me. So I found myself thinking, wow, so this is what you call a champion. You don't remember me. I'm the woman who gave you directions to Lord Gardas's room. Yes, you were. <laughs> I loved the way you guys tied me up, right? Uh, uh, yes, you seem to know me really well already. Um, I'm sorry if we were rough with you last night. Were you hurt at all? <laughs> Thank you for the concern, but I was, er, but having a sturdy body is a specialty of mine, so you needn't worry about me. All right, you came here to tell us something, didn't you? Oh, that's right, I came to call you. Lord Gardas has invited you both to the throne room. Princess. What for? I don't know, that's all he said. I nodded to a nervous Lizette, then returned my gaze back to Kiria. I understand, I remember the place from yesterday, so you can leave it if you want. Uh... Or you can leave if you want, Kiria. Huh? I understand. If you need anything else, just ask me. I have been assigned as your personal servant from now on, so I'll be right there if you ever need me. All right, thank you. Are you sure? If we let her guide us. We don't need hostages. Huh? But... Let's just go. Uh, y yes. Still, she acts like a human. Lizette whispered that to me as we walked towards the throne room. He was on high alert, looking out for any potential ambushes as we went. Ah, oh, well, I'm not even on guard, so I probably look even weirder than Lizette. I knew that I was acting weird, but being all tense and nervous in such a familiar place felt even weirder. The corridors of the castle seemed almost homey. Or homely. The scars on the stone wall, the shape of each window, the length of the shadow cast by the sun, and what lay at the other end of the corridor, I could predict all of it. And one by one, each of my predictions came true. It made me feel uncomfortable. The light ing or, and light anxiety began to run through my stomach. This is... Noticing my expression, Lizette began to get worried and nervously peered at my expression. Princess? Like a human, huh? It'd be nice if we could measure how, or how human someone was with a ruler. Princess, what do you mean by... Oh, uh, um... My voice suddenly leaked out as we turned, or turned a corner. This place. My eyes widened as it came into view my trembling body refusing to calm down. It was... 
you're really warm, Christina. Gardas! The non-existent past suddenly appeared in my mind's eye, so fresh and vivid that I found myself calling out to him. Why does this place look exactly the same? His arms were so warm, I almost forgot about the cold wall I was leaning against. His voice was so gentle, I thought I'd drown in pleasure. It couldn't be! There's no way! That horribly realistic illusion invaded my heart and tortured me from within. I hugged myself tightly, unable to stand it. I felt as if the boundary between dreams and reality was crumbling. Maybe there really is something wrong with me. If Lizette hadn't been standing beside me, I would have fallen to the ground in hysterics. Princess. He probably thought my trembling was due to fear. He gently called my name and took my hand in his, concerned. Sorry, I'm all right now. I squeezed my eyes shut and shook away the overflowing sadness. Then I made a determined expression and stepped into the throne room. You're late, oh champion who has inherited the nostalgic title. Garda spread his arms out dramatically. On both sides of the red carpet, between us and the demon lord, stood two lines of strong men. It was exactly the same as last time, only my heart was different. Gardas! As soon as I saw him, I got the irrepressible urge to run into his arms, to leap and laugh without a care in the world. His arms filled with kindness, his warm chest, his beautiful twilight eyes untainted by death, they were all in front of me. I wanted to touch him, just to make sure. I wanted to cry in his arms and apologize over and over for not believing him. But if I did that, everyone in the room would think I was crazy. I tried to, er, I tried to kill him last night. I was his mortal enemy. As my heart ached for my dilemma, Gardas declared something to the crowd with a voice fit for a king. Everyone, this is an order. I forbid all of you from harming this champion. She is my guest. What? All of the retain oops, all the retainers say, "Yes, my lord." All right, you may leave. All the retainers Oh, whoops. I keep I keep trying to speak that, but it's not something that I should be reading. It's just saying that they're saying it. <laughs> Please excuse us. The men hesitated at first, but they soon all bowed their heads obediently to their lord. As I watched them leave the room, I desperately tried to think of something to say to Gardas. What? What on earth are you planning? In the end, I chose a reaction he would have expected. But doesn't this make your job easier, oh mighty champion? An adult who doesn't know how to play with the children's toy might hurt his fingers, you know. Hmm. So you think you have the right to lecture me after only living for a handful of decades? Living longer doesn't make you any better, don't you think? Indeed. I watched Gardas as he closed his eyes, wearing an unusually gloomy look on his face. Then he suddenly, or then suddenly noticing my gaze, uh, he became startled for a moment. But then he waved his hand, implying that he was just fooling around. Now that I thought about it, Gardas must have been reminded of all the cruelty he'd seen in his long life. His lifespan was several times longer than a human's, so all that pain and sorrow he experienced over a lifetime was far heavier on his heart. He'd been king for longer than most human rulers as well, so the suffering he'd experienced was unimaginable. Gardas! I wasn't sure what to say to him. I wanted to comfort him, but... I still couldn't tell if this was reality or not, if this was all still a dream. Anything I said or did would have no meaning whatsoever. Even so, I opened my mouth wanting to say something, anything. Lord Gardas! What is it? A pale demon suddenly ran into the room, interrupting our conversation. He was sweating heavily, and his clothes looked dirty and disheveled. Tragedy has befallen the West Borders yet again, your highness. 
Tragedy has befallen the West Borders yet again, Your Highness. By fault of the champions, Lord Rev... Er, eh. Lord Reveal has rushed to the scene and things have settled down for the moment. But if this continues, we may have to bring the villagers to the capital. I see. I'll leave it to you then. I will see the villagers for myself later. Yes, my lord. After accepting his orders, the man gave a courteous bow. And as he left, I caught a glimpse of his determined expression. He seemed totally different to the pale man he was a few moments ago. I could understand why now. Gardas was the king who did everything he could to protect his kingdom, and the people trusted and respected him for that. You're going? I am. It saddens me to leave you all alone, but I have a duty to fulfill. If it upsets you that much, then take me with you. Huh? Neither Gardas nor Lizette had expected that, and they both stiffened up in shock. Realizing that I'd probably said something I shouldn't have, I quickly added, Well, um, after meeting that Kadia woman and a few others, I can accept that they're nothing like the monstrous demons we were always told about. As a champion, my goal is to find true peace, so I think it's important that I investigate you demons further. It wasn't very convincing at all, and Gardas looked at me with eyes full of suspicion. You know, that sounds very different to the drivel you were spouting last night. Are you going to backstab me while we're inspecting the village? You're bored and you want toys to play with, right? Then why not enjoy some constant vigilance? <laughs> You're more interesting than I expected. Very well, you may both come. And we shall. Princess, what on earth are you? Sorry, Lizette, I know what you're thinking, but just trust me for now. Please. If that is what you wish, princess. Are you sure? Do you really think I could decline a request made by you, princess? No matter what situation we're in, I'll risk my life to fulfill your every command. The word life uh, uh, ruminated deeply within my chest, drawing that crimson scenery back into my mind. The image of Lizette in my dream, bathed in blood and cradled in Gardas' arms, overlapped with, uh, with the Lizette smiling in front of me. Princess? Thank you. I suddenly wanted to cry. I clenched my fist, desperately biting back the tears and trying to smile back at him. How cruel! I grimaced at the brutal scene before us. There were survivors, but it must have been a wide-scale attack since every single building in the village was damaged. Some were reduced to rubble, with smoke, ling or with smoke lingered around others. As long as some of the villagers survive, there's still hope. I suppose this is a wonderful sight to you two, isn't it? If you have the time to talk like that, then shouldn't you be using it to help the casualties? What? Come on, Lizette. I heard a voice below the rubble here. Oh, right. I ignored Gardas as he looked on in disbelief and concentrated on the collapsing building, or the collapsed building. Once all the rubble was gone, we found a few tearful children curled up at the bottom. They'd been lucky. The rubble had fallen in just the right way and none of them were crushed. At first, they were delighted, and their eyes glittered with relief, but once they saw we were human, they flinched and started trembling. D don't kill us! I won't, it's alright. We're here to save you, aren't we, Lizette? Y yeah Really? Yes, really. This tough guy here will protect all of you. Huh? I'll leave the children to you. I'll look for more survivors. Are you serious? Princess! Hey, are you leaving? A little hand gripped the hem of my- or of his coat. 
Um, confusion and alarm reflected in Lizette's eyes. Well, I'm not surprised. Lizette was heterodoxist, so he was probably finding this hard to accept. Worried for a few moments, I stopped walking and glanced back at them. No, this is Lizette we're talking about. He wouldn't hurt them. Hey! But then, Lizette's hesitant eyes suddenly flooded with resolution. Can you still stand up? But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video.